Hey, what is up guys? It is Chris Evans with another breakdown material tutorial. And this is gonna be the one I did with uh, that moon crater I called the first. And so yeah, let's just dive right into it. So usually what I do is I always add a solid layer. I feel like it's a good base. Always have something underneath your working uh, uh, layers. So then I toggle this on. Obviously I increase the uh, threshold up. So now let's get into the fun stuff. So I created a mask stack and we're just gonna go all the way down. And I started with this shape. Uh, I was just, eh, it looks good. It's a circle. It's not perfect. I squished it a little bit. And then I added a small gradient. It, you can see it tapered down just a little bit. I lowered the opacity and I put on a multiply. Then I scattered it a whole bunch. Um, the scatter is pretty arbitrarily, or it's arbitrarily, no, arbitrary numbers. Uh, didn't really go in like, oh, I need to have 48. You know, just play with it. You know, did it until something felt good. You know, you can do that all day. And then I decided to rescatter it, just make it super dense. Um, I felt like it was easier to just rescatter it than try to get the, this uh, look with just one scatter. And then I inverted it and I was like, all right, cool, I'm feeling crater like. And then I created a secondary shape, so pretty much the same thing. I can, here, let me just toggle all this stuff off. So I pretty much just duplicated it, the main one, made it smaller, scattered it again, inverted it again. Looking like some Swiss cheese. But let me toggle all this stuff back on. And then this is pretty much what we get. Right, and this is the secondary shape is on a multiply from the base shape. And you always want to do it on the shape itself, not on any of these guys, because it won't work. And then I apply a overall noise. It's on a distort, and the distort intensity is pretty high. I didn't care that it looked too whirly because I'm gonna blur it. And I was like, okay, cool, it's soft, but you know the formations are feeling pretty crater-like. And then now I added a whirly on top just to really bring up like some some peaks and valleys and stuff like that. Um, so just adjusting the seed amplitude, the octaves are pretty low. Kind of I upped the, up the persistence a little bit and I felt this is pretty good. Uh, I did an overlay. Um, so yeah, always playing with these uh, blending modes is super cool. You can get crazy looks. Uh, I wish that you could do like a wheel scroll while it, well, cy cycling the different blending modes. That'd be awesome. But um, yeah, so let's go back to the overlay. And then I did a tertiary one where you'll see, you can see little small circles. Just basically doing this again. Uh, shape, scatter, and then inverting it. Or this one I didn't invert. So I scattered it, blurred it, and then boom. Um, actually, I realized I think later on that you could just invert here. But it's all good. Um, so now we got this cool, uh, you know, small shapes for the crater. And then I did an overall blur because that noise underneath the uh, the whirly was a bit strong. So I figured it was a good time to just do an overall blur. <clears throat> so now I had this noise. And then we're finally getting some, like, uh, detail. I mean, you can, not looking crazy, just adding some, it's basically that whirly again, just, uh, just more fine-tuned. Again, just b blending. Uh, with an overlay, uh, lowering the opacity, you can increase it or decrease it if you want. Uh, adjusting seed, persistence, just rinse and repeat until you feel like it looks good. And I did a distort overall on the whole thing, and this is where it starts to like really feel like a crater rocky uh, surface. So the distort intensity is pretty low, or it's pretty high. Uh, I went negative. You don't have to go negative per se. Just I, I went that way and it felt good. Um, octaves up pretty high because I wanted it to uh, really uh, shift the material around or shift the the height and then I did a fine noise overall which was cool and I was getting like more porousy which is really nice but I didn't like it overall so I did this uh, subtract some it's just a purlin noise if I hit zero you can look at the active mask so you know low contrast just soft pockets like so i didn't want it to appear here but it's going to appear here better in the gray is just smooth transitions and stuff like that so if i toggle it on and off like this is a good area right here you can see that i'm just getting rid of get a, getting rid of some of it which is which i thought was cool and then i thought the pockets could use some more detail so i added this pocket noise which is just filling in those areas with some good detail uh again octave persistent adjusting the seed seeing what you like and it's cool because you can increase it if you're like you know i want crazier frequency you can just go crazy with it you really get fine too like if you wanted to make sand and crevices and stuff like that and then i did a, 
a smaller noise just to really get it fine tuned. I was like, you know, this is looking pretty good. And it was super quick to make and it's a ton of fun once you get a, a hold or once you kind of understand how the stacks work. I would definitely recommend um, naming everything because sometimes I won't name them. I'm just like, oh, what is this blur or noise, 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 like just uh, can, got, can get very uh, confusing. So I definitely recommend naming them. And then uh, this morning uh, when I was opening it to prepare for this video, I was like, oh, I can do a couple more things. So um, I, I wanted to get like a good base roughness. So I actually loaded this in. I just loaded in uh, random. Oh, let me. Yeah, it's, I mean, something crazy. It's just to have something to start off with. So it's not just one uh, solid. And then um, this guy I thought was cool. If I wanted to have a variation to where, where I kind of like flatten some of those deep pockets out. And it's just some basic noises, like low contrast, you know. And I, I don't even think I adjusted. I, I think I turned the octaves up, but that's about it. Uh, these are toggled off, or the, at least the blur was. And another one. So it's doing nothing crazy. It's just a way to kind of flatten this out. I up the threshold some, so I can just like, oh, I can fill it in, you know, variation. And then this guy, I get, gave him like a curvature pass. Which is really cool. Um, it's probably one of my favorite things in here. Just you just turn on the curvature, and then you can just adjust. You can give get some pretty cool uh, curvature action going on real quick. So lots of cool stuff. And then um, I was actually digging through the library, and I saw the sand debris that happened to work really well. So I plopped it on, and I was just like, I mean, you can definitely do this procedurally, but all this fine tuned stuff, I was like, oh shit, just wish I uh, did it <laughs> when I first uh, made it. But it's all good, and it looks cool as hell. Um, and so, yeah, this is basically how I created this material. Um, I hope you found this informative. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya.